Uh, what I like about surgery is that um, it involves making a commitment to the patient. To take care of patients from start to finish. Being available, talking to them myself, bedside care, coming in on the weekends, whatever it might take. When I operate on a patient, I operate on one patient at a time. And I'm in the room when we start the case. I'm there throughout the case and I close and I'm there until the patient leaves the room. I don't have other people doing things for me, one patient at a time. I'm uh, proud of uh, my commitment to my patients. Um, uh, that has always been my hallmark. Um, I take care of patients personally. My second is, is that I'm proud that I teach. Uh, I love working with the residents. I, can't, I couldn't imagine practicing without working with the residents and, um, and I like showing them the passion that I have for surgery and uh, the commitment that I make to the patients. I'd like to think that I am training people who I'd be very comfortable and uh, proud to have take care of me if I need to. Well, I'm a chest surgeon. Um, I was trained uh, in, again in a broad um, chest surgery field which includes uh, things that people routinely think of for chest surgery like doing lung surgery for example removing lung tumors but also things related to uh, chest infections airway surgery, chest wall problems. But the thing that um, has been somewhat unique for me over the years is I also have a very busy esophageal practice, which means I do hiatal hernia work. People who have had their esophagus injured, I repair it. People who have cancer of the esophagus, uh, I take that out and reconstruct it. One of my uh, first, it involved a young boy who was uh, shot accidentally. Uh, with a shotgun in, in the upper portion of his uh, abdomen. And really miraculously, uh, I think probably the fact that he was 15 is what saved him and um, sent down uh, to, uh, to me as the you know, young guy to try to figure out. He was lucky to survive, uh, but it uh, disconnected his esophagus and uh, really completely disconnected his upper GI tract. And so he couldn't eat. He was told he was never gonna eat. Uh, all of the things that historically we were taught you would use in the older days to reconstruct the esophagus were gone. I came up with the idea, uh, thinking about this kid for a while, about how I was going to put him back together. I presented it at conferences uh, downtown. I was told that I couldn't do it, couldn't be done, um, wasn't something that people could do. Um, I asked around some more, I did some searches and everything. In fact, I, I didn't see any reason why I couldn't do it. So I booked the case, um, I did the case, and um, he did fine, and ultimately and was back swallowing, growing, doing fine. But I think that's really what started me on doing things that were really outside of the box for esophageal surgery. I, I have seen miraculous things. I've certainly seen people who have been incapable of eating, and I've helped them eat and breathe that they couldn't before and live when they were not going to before. And I've certainly had people, lots of people who have cancers that threaten their life and their livelihoods and, and, uh, and I have been uh, involved in their cure um, and have taken great satisfaction from that. But I uh, hope that I give to people um, a notion of what their options are. I give them uh, an, a trust that, that they're in the right place and give them the commitment that I'm gonna be there for them and then um, let them know, as I always do, that, uh, that I will do my best. I never, you can never promise people uh, what the outcome is gonna be, but you can promise them that you're gonna give them your full uh, commitment and your best, and I do promise them, and I do give it to them.